So welcome to conference this week, all of you in our extended family. We wanted to let you know that I have some fun stuff on the homepage for you. The archetypes which we're studying, Carolyn Meese's book um, is on our homepage, as well as this week's book that we're going to be talking about is on the homepage. Last week, I also promised you that you could take the Myers-Briggs Jungian test um, online, and that will be on the homepage as well. And all of that being part of our um, moving towards our golden, the hero's journey, uh, all of us doing a little svadhyaya, self-study, getting close to ourselves, and, and just looking at um, the, the homework I gave everyone was to write a big, put a big red dot in your journal that says, I am here, and for us to kind of identify first how we got here and what's going on here in order for us on our journey, um, sort of to look at where we're going is helpful. So specifically last week, we were a little more psychology. So the week before we did Ishwa Devatas, our, our deity of choice, or our patron saint in the Catholic tradition, all of that has to really do a lot with our spiritual path and seeing ourselves through that lens of not just body, not just energy, not just goal-oriented beings, but also spiritual beings. And then using the psychology test and the archetypes is just another way for us to sort of support that work that we're doing. But this week Week, definitely what I'd like to say to all of you is I'm bringing you another lens to see yourself through but this one is supporting your spiritual understanding of yourself this week is fun I had some students get super excited and jump up and down this week is um, spirit animals and understanding um, your your totems and I am NOT an expert in spirit animals um, so I chose a book that I absolutely love and I highly recommend for your I'm kind of separating it out now your Svadhyaya library so your self-study library is maybe a little different than your yoga library this one goes in your self-study library it's called animal speak and it's by Ted Andrews and again, it's on our um, homepage. And um, Ted Andrews is, I believe, an expert in understanding your spirit animals and how we can actually use them in our life, which is everything we've been doing the last few weeks is making these tests that we take or understanding our archetypes really applicable to going out and driving around California or having jobs or raising children or, you know, all the things that we do, making this um, very applicable for that. So um, how many of you already know that you have sort of a totem or a spirit animal in this room? How many of you would already say that you have one? Yes. Some people right away know that. They've always known they've had an animal sort of as their guide or whatever. And other people, maybe different times in their life, have felt something. Um, I, the first thing I want to say about this, and this is more from my perspective, is this last couple years we've been studying and talking about the importance of getting back to nature. Like we, we are born uh, human and in this avatar, which is understanding this is how I interface with this planet. I need this particular type of body and how it works with oxygen and gravity and all those wonderful things. But we really, we are part of this woven planet Earth that has plants and trees and the way oxygen works with the trees and the humans. And we're, we're all interconnected with this, with this nature. And I feel like in our, in our time of being alive, we're just moving more and more and more away from that. And that's partially what's making us unhealthy or, or depressed or anxious or stressed and all the different things in our life is, is that we keep moving without realizing it more and more away from that very nature we're designed to be part of. And so I believe the Native Americans, looking back at their culture and how they've, they're very much connected with the earth and, and all the gifts of the earth and um, the animals of the earth and, and very much intertwined in their daily lives and their daily lives are very spiritual in that way. Even in a process of hunting for them is a very spiritual. And so really me as your teacher wanting all of us to kind of get back to that, like hunting for us is going to work. But we separate that from our spirituality when really it's really all meant to be part of that. I, I always bring the Balinese culture into this because I always love being in Bali and seeing how the Balinese really bring their spirituality into every little thing they do, whether that's farming or cooking or whatever. And, um, and so uh, the closer we can kind of get into that, the more I feel like we get into that healthy interaction and healthy place ourselves. So animals are, as we are, energy. I'm energy. I'm reading an amazing book right now called um, The Secret Life of Trees. 
And that one's, if we get a recommendation, maybe we'll put it on our homepage about just how amazing trees are, how they communicate with each other. They send out danger signals to other trees. They're this community through the rooting system, how they support um, an entire forest. And, and it's mind blowing. Um, but when you read it, you realize like, wow, we really are so connected to this, this earth, this nature, and it's so much more complicated and beautiful and intelligent than we realize. So the animals for us are, are energies and, and using animals as spirit guides or as totems is a way for us on our own path to have, there's a few things I'm gonna mention, is a way for us to have guidance when we need it on our path, a way for us to feel inspired on our path, and also a way for us to face our challenges, to find strengths or to see our weaknesses by using animal energy, animal spirit. Um, so I, I just wanna read a couple of ways that um, Ted Andrews in this book helps you sort of identify um, how to know that you have uh, a spirit totem. Do you know your animal totem? So I'm just gonna read through just briefly a couple things I think are important. The first one he says, which animal or birds have always fascinated you? So if you've always been fascinated with elephants, you know, then that, that you can consider that there's a reason. Our subconscious is always at play. And when we bring it to the conscious mind, it can become more powerful. So just an animal you've always been fascinated with. When you were young and you went to the zoo, what was the first animal you wanted to see? What was the animal you could not miss at the zoo because you were so enamored with it? That's another way to know your spirit animal. Um, what animals do you see most frequent, frequently when you're in nature or that you encounter in the wild? So Dwayne and I were talking about when he's out hiking or mountain biking, what animals come to him? Um, and that can be part of your um, totem as well. All of the animals in the world, which are you most interested in right now? Because uh, interests change. You know, when you were young, it might have been the tiger, and as you get older, it became the eagle. What animals frighten you? Um, that which we fear the most is often something we must learn to come to terms with. Uh, when we do that, then we become, it becomes more powerful for us. So when I refer to shamans here, the shaman is you. Your relationship with the animal, you are the shaman. So some shamans believe that fears will take shape in animals and only when we confront them without fear do their powers or medicine work for us instead of against us such animals we would refer to as the shadow totem. So if you're super scared of spiders, I'm kind of creeped out by spiders, um, something for us, um, someone else really afraid of snakes, you know, or scorpions, bats, dogs. Um, they also say if you were ever attacked by that animal or bit by that animal, that that's a very powerful experience for you to use on your totem to work through something. Um, and do you have any dreams uh, with animals in them? It's really, really powerful that animals can come to us through dreams. So if, if that happens to really kind of sit with what that means to you. And by the way, I'll, I'll get to this at the end, but this book is an amazing dictionary of animals. So even today, I'm sorry, we won't be able to do this with our extended community, but if you buy this book, there's a visualization that you can go through. We're gonna do in Shavasana today. And at the end of the visualization, your animal comes to you. And, and if you're like fascinated by that, not familiar with that animal, then the, in this lovely little spirit and also just um, understanding that animal um, in, in, in its environment as well. All that information is in this book, so it's kind of helpful. So I'm gonna go just over a couple things from, again, Ted's book that says the basics of animal totems. I just want to have you guys, especially if you're new to this, how many of you are really new to this idea of having a spirit guide animal or totem? It's okay, it's good. So every animal has a powerful spirit. Um, the spirit may be known or that um, it could it could actually, um, the animal image could communicate messages to human beings. Uh, every animal has its own talents and that the more you study the talents, it reveals a kind of medicine, magic, and power that can develop from your life um, or your relationship with that animal. Um, lifelong power animals are usually in the wild, they're not domesticated, typically. So we normally don't have a dog or one of our cats 
or gerbils as our totem or our power animal. But there are exceptions, some very powerful gerbils out there. Um, and this one's the most important. Um, the animal chooses the person, it's not the other way around. And so I think sometimes when we start hearing about um, power animals and spirit guides, we're like, I want the tiger, you know, or, you know. But, but it chooses us, and, and really the way it works with Ishwa Devotas and anything sort of in this realm of opening yourself up to energy, it's just a matter of opening yourself up to the energy, and, and then it, it kind of has its way of showing you, you know, and it can be crazy ways like backs of bumper stickers and things that flash on your television, or someone walks up to you tomorrow, well, you, you see the eagle today and someone walks up to you tomorrow and says, I'm gonna go to this eagle refuge, and you know, it's it, crazy stuff like that, that I, right now I'm, everyone's sharing their stories with me, so it's, really exciting for me to hear everyone's cool stories. But the good thing is you don't have to try. The animal, the animal will find you once you're open to it. Um, and the other important thing is, and, and I'll sort of end on this because there's a lot that I could read, um, is that you, you have to develop a relationship with your animal guide or with the totem. And again, it's sort of like the Eshwa Devata, understanding that if you chose Ganesh, you learn Ganesh chants and you have a, a little depiction of Ganesh and you read all about the different things of Ganesh. And it's similar with the animal when you want to open yourself up to it. So what he suggests is hanging a picture of the animal, drawing a picture, or reading all kinds of information. For me, it was the hawk, and so I was really um, deep in information about the red-tailed hawk and where they live and how they made and how long they live and um, their, their flight and, and different things of the sort. But in this book also talks about like the spiritual qualities of the hawk and how they manifest in, in a relationship between a human and a hawk. We, um, we have a student here at the Shala and she is, she's, she's an animal psychic. And I love talking to her because it's really fun to hear her stories and, and how she's been able to, maybe from some natural talent, but also she's very interested in this. So she really is developing that skill of being able to communicate with animals energetically. And so even before we decided to study this, she was sharing with me her um, communicating with a crow one day and how, how you begin that relationship and how at first, like, like anything we do, like trying to do chaturangas, at first we don't have the upper body strength, but the more you do them, the more you get stronger. And in that communication with the hawk, I mean the, the crow, that at first um, she was asking the crow to come to her and to um, make that connection so she knew they were communicating. And, uh, and it took a, a, like a day or so, and then that next day the, the crow came to the window and sat in the window and actually just sat for a while and gave her eye contact. But that we, um, but we can develop a relationship by just that energy and or things as simple as uh, asking for guidance or messages. I had another student who, this is a really beautiful story, and then uh, I'll end on this one. She was driving home and uh, a white, bird flew in front of her car and over her car and then sat on the side of the road so that she could clearly see this bird. And she was like, wow, that, that must mean, you know how that is with animals sometimes, you're like, wow, that must mean something, you know? What was that? And she's like, I thought maybe it was a pigeon or a seagull, but it was so white, it didn't look like any of those things. And so she went about her day and that evening met with friends and um, that evening, their friends said that they were part of the Race for the Cure that morning, and they did a big race, and for the race, they released 100 white doves. And she, they figured out the time and the location and stuff that it was a white dove that had flown from that release over her car and sat on the road. This part will make me cry when I say it, but she's a survivor of breast cancer. And she was really, she's, when you're a survivor of breast cancer, you're worried if it's all gone and if you're okay. And she said, when she heard that, she felt like the dove had told her, you got this. <laughs> so, so many stories people have been sharing with me like this. And, um, and so, you know, I think part of it is training ourselves to see. I think of T sometimes with a camera. She's really amazing with a camera. She can go anywhere and she just sees differently and she sees in a way that she picks up on these nuances to grab this picture. So carrying a camera becomes a different way that we start, sort of see our world. 
And I feel like introducing this to myself again and to all of you as a way to give us this new lens to start to see nature and to see the animals that we're surrounded by as, as messengers, as guides, as encouragements, or however you want. And the more you keep opening yourself up to it, the more you'll have these little experiences where, you know, you're going through something and a bird will fly up to you and it just felt like, you know, I have one student in particular who, since her father passed, uh, has amazing experiences with hummingbirds. And, and now her daughter is having these experiences with hummingbirds. And they're just like, it's something inside us we talk about, Vigyana Mycosha, that you can't deny her like that's just an internal yes, is, is, is part of that connectedness where we can have that Vigyana Mycosha and animals really really being that for us as well. So we'll finish class in Shavasana with a, with a vision quest, if you will, a little guided meditation where you can welcome an animal. And those of you in our extended community can use this book to do that. But no matter what, let's all just open ourselves up this week to, to animals being a bigger part of our life. Namaste. Sorry, T, I forgot the quote was about crows, but it's in the back of the room. Yeah, let's grab it real quick. Let's grab it and then we'll get started. How many of you like crows? <laughs> crows are an incredibly intelligent. Yeah. Well, they're all over the place. If, if you don't like them, you'll, you're going to think of them now. So, quote for the week. Wherever crows are, there is magic. There are they are symbols of creation and spiritual strength. They remind us to look for opportunities to create and manifest the magic in our life. They are messengers calling to us about creation and magic and, to, and that they are alive within our world every day and they are available to us. Sorry, there was a typo in there. Um, so now every time we see crows, which we see a lot, we're just going to be like, ah, magic. Namaste. <laughs>